Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at the new Samsung Galaxy Note 3, perhaps the most anticipated Android phone ending 2013. So basically, this succeeds the Note 2 with a update that kind of brings it up to speed with the very popular Galaxy S4. So if you're not familiar with the Note 2, basically it was a fairly large phone, a 5.5 inch phone with a stylus built in and some impressive software features that took advantage of that stylus. So this is all new. They've managed to increase the screen size to 4.7 inches, 1080p resolution over 720p here, and they've managed to thin it down, make it lighter, and make it narrower. So they give us a thinner, uh, more compact device while giving us a larger screen and impressive internal specs. So let's go and take a look at those specs. That's one of the big stories here. This is the SMN900 version, which means I have the 3G version, the, the 3G only version. There is an LTE version. Uh, that will be sold in the U.S. at AT&T, Verizon, Sprint, and T-Mobile. This is sold in 3G markets or markets that don't really have LTE. Uh, now, LTE will give you a quad-core processor. This has the octa-core processor. So this has the 1.9 gigahertz quad-core plus a 1.3 gigahertz quad-core. Basically, it's the same processor from the GS4. Now, if you get the LTE version with a quad-core processor, that one is clocked at 2.3 gigahertz. So a really impressive processor. Now, this also has 3 gigs of RAM. So that's a jump from the 2 gigs of RAM in the previous Note series, and it's also an improvement over the two gigs in the GS4. Now, unfortunately, missing from this model, specifically the 3G only model, is 4K recording capability. Unfortunately, that's only available on the N9005 model, which is the 4G LTE version. That's the version that will be sold in the US and global LTE markets. Now, we also have a 3200 milliamp hour battery versus the 3100 from the Note 2. So they've bumped out the battery, even though they've shrunken it down and made it thinner and lighter. Now the packaging is pretty familiar for Samsung in 2013. Basically all the products sold this year have these sort of wood grain packages using soy ink uh, and the material is more recyclable, basically a paper carton. Uh, so that's one of the themes you see with all Galaxy products this year. So let's go ahead and crack this open. And as you can see, there is our Galaxy Note 3. I do have the white version. There is a black version and a pink version available. But let's set that aside and get the contents out of the way. So you can see we have our uh, literature packet here. So SMN900 Quick Start Guide. Basically it tells you about installing the battery, the buttons, that sort of thing. Uh, and of course in Spanish as well, you have your key features handbook. Basically tells you some of the features of the S Pen and TouchWiz features and other things like that, which we'll explore in this video. Now we also have this little flyer for Smart Switch on Samsung.com, which basically allows you to transfer the contents of your previous smartphone to your new Note 3. Now the USB cable is a little different here. So this is USB 3.0, so the Note 3 does support 3.0. This is actually the first smartphone I've seen with this feature. Uh, so basically this can charge faster. This is nice for larger battery devices like the Note 3 or tablets like the Note 10.1. Also inside we'll find our stylus tip replacement tool. So basically you use this to pull the tips out of the stylus if you want to change them. You have a pair of headphones with an inline remote and microphone. You can see these are those in-ear headphones with those gels you can pop on and off. In fact, they do give you a, a set of gels to fit your ears. You have our uh, USB charger. This is the wall adapter. You can see this is for the America Samsung. So you see your USB port on the side for charging. You also have your battery here. So we have have our 3200 milliamp hour battery which also has the NFC technology built in so NFC is available on this phone built into this battery all right so now that we're done with our accessories let's go ahead and talk about the phone so first let's remove some of the plastic now the plastic does illustrate some of the features here again the USB 3.0 port which is on the bottom uh, and we have to remove the back cover to install the battery and SIM let's go ahead and peel this off you do have to pop off the back cover to install the battery and in the SIM as well so on the front, we have our cover here. So let's peel it off. So you can see Super AMOLED, Android, NFC, Bluetooth, etc. Uh, on the side, let's see if we have those plastic strips. And we do, so let's go ahead and peel those off as well. All right, so I think that is the last of it. Now let's go ahead and pop off this back panel to install our battery. Now if you look at that panel, that's one of the interesting design stories here. You can see it's got kind of a full leather finish. It's still just rigid plastic. It's not a soft touch material, but it's kind of got a leather grain to it with that stitching on it. Now it's not real stitching, it's just molded plastic. So it kind of gives you a more professional look, kind of like a leather bound wallet or notebook or something like that. Uh, so it kind of goes with the theme of the Note series. All right, so I'm just gonna drop in our battery, snaps into place, and if you look up here, you'll see this combination micro, SIM, 
and micro SD card slot. So basically the SIM is right here. So you have to remove the battery in order to install the SIM and the micro SD card slot is just above that. Uh, we also have a piece of plastic covering our camera lens up here. So let's go ahead and peel that off. So there you go. So as you can see, the battery basically takes up most of the internals of the phone. So here you have the back cover. If you look on the inside, not a whole lot there. Now you can buy accessories that will replace this back cover, such as the Smart View cover, uh, which is an accessory I'll review later. But basically it snaps in and replaces this. this. is one of the advantages of having a removable cover in addition to being able to replace the battery. All right, so let's go ahead and snap that back on. All right, so let's go and take a look at the design of the Note 3, which is kind of a new story here for Samsung. With Samsung, we're pretty familiar with the existing design. So we have the Note 2 and the Galaxy S4 here, which all have these glossy back panels. No matter what color you get, it has this glossy, kind of slippery design. Uh, so they've gone with something a little different for the Note 3. They've gone with this sort of textured back panel, which resembles leather. It isn't leather, it's just hard plastic, and you see that stitching along the edge. So it gives you kind of a premium look and a more comfortable feel feel to it, doesn't feel as slippery or as slimy as some people have called it. Uh, I actually kind of like it, but it doesn't feel as premium as the look suggests, so it doesn't really feel like leather, it doesn't even feel like fake leather, it just feels like hard textured plastic, but it does feel more comfortable to handle. Now if you look really closely at the bottom, you can see that the stylus isn't as integrated as it was with the Note 2, so you see the Note 2 kind of blends into the bezel a little bit. Here it kind of sticks out a bit more. Uh, it's still flush to the device, doesn't really stick out, but uh, you can see it's more uh, visible this time. So it pulls out, so you can see the Samsung branding there, and you can see it's color matched to the white. So if you got the black one, this would be black, or pink, this would be pink. So you can see the button here, and I'll demonstrate these features. There is the uh, tip, which you can replace, and they do give you that tool to replace it with. Now the great thing here is that the stylus can be installed in either direction. So you can have it this way, or this way with the other design, you had to be exactly right, otherwise it would get jammed in there. Now on the bottom you see your single loudspeaker, which is now side firing instead of back firing, which we haven't seen on a lot of uh, Samsung phones yet. So this is kind of a nice improvement. The idea here is you no longer block the speaker when you put it down on the surface. You can see our, our USB 3.0 port. Now the interesting thing here is that USB 3.0 does carry more current, so it's a faster charging port versus a uh, standard micro USB. But you can use a micro USB cable with this. So for example, I have a micro USB port. You can see on the left side here, if we just stick it in there, you can see it fits just perfectly. Of course, it does leave uh, that port open and it doesn't take advantage of the USB 3.0 speeds and charging capacity. So if we look at our USB 3.0 cable, there you go, you can see it's uh, got a specific design. It is, of course, much larger. Plug it in and there you go. Down here you have one of the microphones, and as you can see along the side you got this ribbed pattern which kind of picks up on this notebook design and feel. Uh, so if you look at the, again, the Note 2, you can see it's kind of a rounded metal look to it. Uh, this is still a metal look, but now it's kind of ridged, so it looks like pages of a book. You see another microphone here. On the left, you see your power sleep-wake button. On the right, you have your thumbnail port for popping off the back panel. Up here, you'll find your IR blaster, which is now commonplace on all Samsung devices for 2013 and beyond. Uh, so you can control your AV equipment using an app, which they've included. You have a noise cancellation microphone. You have your headphone jack. On the left side, you have your volume rocker, which is pretty far up there, but it seems to be in the right location, uh, so it feels pretty comfortable to me. And that's it along the side, and along the back you'll see this bump out for the camera. Again, 13 megapixels, very similar to the specs of the GS4 camera. It's basically the same as the GS4 camera. So we go from an 8 megapixel from Note 2 to this design. So nice high quality 13 megapixel camera with a lot of features, including dual shot and a lot of features I'll demonstrate. You also have this LED flash, which has a lot of interesting properties here. It's able to adjust the coloring. Uh, for a better flash experience. So you get better quality flash when you're using it. You also have your Samsung branding on the back and that's about all on the back. So on the front, if we look up here, you see your two megapixel front facing camera, your ambient light sensor and proximity sensor, as well as your earpiece. We also have an ambient light, not an ambient light. We have a notification LED light right here. Uh, to the left side of the earpiece, which is pretty familiar again to the GS4 and other Samsung Galaxy devices. Down here you have your home button, as well as your backlit capacitive uh, menu control, and your back button here. So you can see that's pretty familiar territory, it does go away. And the stylus does work with those capacitive buttons here, which is, wasn't the case with the Note 2. Uh, so for example, if you bring it out here, there you go, you can see it brings it up. Uh, same with the back button. So it does work a little bit better than the Note 2. 
Now just to quickly look at the size comparison between the Note 2 and the Note 3, you can see we have a 5.5 inch screen versus this 5.7 inch screen, but you can see that the overall footprint is actually smaller with the Note 3, thanks mostly to the fact that they've preserved about the same height here, uh, but reduced its width uh, a little bit here. So you can see that the bezels are smaller at the edges, so you get a smaller grip in your hand, a more comfortable grip in your hand versus this device. Now if you look at it side by side again, you can see the buttons are about the same location, but you can see the design is different, so you can see it is thinner. This was more rounded versus the Note 3. You can see that the volume rocker is a little higher on the device this time, but in the same location. Up top you see your headphone jack, your noise cancellation microphones. Of course the Note 3 has an IR blaster, which the Note 2 does not have. On the side you see your sleep wake button, also a little higher on the Note 3 this time, and your thumbnail port for popping off the back panel. Down here you see that we have my, a micro USB 2.0 versus USB 3.0 here, and we have our uh, uh, microphones down here. Uh, of course the speaker has also been repositioned so it's on the back on the uh, Note 2 versus on the front on the side for the Note 3. We also have the same locations for our uh, styluses which have these silos built right into the device so if you pop this out you can see the stylus here was actually form-fitted to the design of the Note 2 uh, versus the Note 3 which is a little more interchangeable or a little more modular here so you can move it in either direction. Now looking at the styluses again pretty similar they've moved the button on the Note 3 stylus up a little bit you can see the design up here is a little changed so you get that rid pattern versus that smoother pattern and again you can see that the heads are a little bit different but they got the same sort of tips here which are removable and replace it when they use that Wacom technology for uh, interacting with the screen. All right, so let's go and take a look at the user interface starting with the lock screen now. We are running Android 4.3 versus 4.1 on the Note 2. Now the lock screen kind of has a new effect here for Samsung, so we have this watercolor, and as you can see, we have this ear view capability here, so let me bring it up again. So if you wave your finger over, you can see it sees the presence of your finger, and if you swipe your finger over the screen, you can see it can kind of play with this watercolor wallpaper. And unlock the device takes you to your home screen. Now you have a few other things thanks to Android, the latest version of Android here. You have your lock screen widget so you can get to your mail, you can get to Google Now, or you can go ahead and add a few more things. Uh, you can also, if you go to lock screen, you can quickly launch your camera by swiping to the right. Whoops, let's do that again. Kind of have to go over one of the widgets like this clock widget here. Swipe to the right, takes you to the camera. You can also set this so it takes you to your favorite apps. You can do that under settings and we'll explore the camera app a bit later. Now you can also use S Voice to unlock the phone. Hi Galaxy. What's the weather like tomorrow? There will be a high of 74 degrees with lots of sunshine on Saturday. Now we can also interact with the device while it's locked. So this is kind of similar to the Moto X feature. So all you have to do is say, Hi Galaxy. What's the weather like tomorrow? Here is the weather for Auburn Hills, Michigan. We'll have both sun and rain on Sunday. Now like the Galaxy S4, you can also use this screen with gloved hands, so there is extra sensitivity to this capacitive screen. All right, so let's go and take a look at the user interface, and it's pretty familiar touch whiz territory here. You can pinch in and out to see all of your home screens. You can select which one you want to be your home screen. You can swipe between your home screens or use this little slider to uh, quickly move between them. You can go to your app drawer to see all of your apps. You can tap your widgets, and you can also use that little slider mechanism as well to select between them. You can also go to all your downloaded apps to see apps you specifically downloaded to this device. And uh, you can also see all the apps that Samsung has included, including the standard array of Samsung apps and Google apps. So you can see there are two new ones, S Note and Scrapbook. We're pretty familiar with everything else. So we see S Planner and the email app. We also see the music player and the video player, which are Samsung's apps for media. And we also see the chat on app. Uh, they've included YouTube as well and Google Maps, and we have the Google Play Store. We also have Samsung Hub and Samsung Apps. Now, if you look down here, you can see they've organized some of the apps into these folders. So we have a Samsung folder, which has all of our Samsung apps like S Health and S Translator, the Knox Security app, Action Memo, uh, Watch On, which is that app for controlling IR equipment, Samsung Link, Downloads, Group Play, Calculator, the Samsung Browser, etc., etc. You also have Galaxy Plus, which are basically third-party apps that have partnered with Samsung that include Sketchbook for Galaxy, which is an Autodesk app. We have Flipboard, Dropbox. With Dropbox, you do get free 50 gigs of free online storage uh, with a, when you log in or register your device. We also have Evernote and TripAdvisor. Now, if you want to add any app to the home screen, all you have to do is drag and drop it. So, for example, if I want to grab Instagram here, it takes you to my viewer here, so I can drag and drop it to any home screen. 
just by kind of dragging it to this little bar down here, which takes us through our home screens. And once I find the home screen I want to place in, I just drag it and drop it here. Now, if I want to remove it, just tap and hold it, take it up to remove, or I can create a folder. That's the only way to create a folder. You can't just drag and drop it over an app and create that folder. So for example, if I drag it over one of these apps, you can see it just bumps it out of the way. Now onto the notification shade again, it's pretty familiar, but there are a few differences here, a few updates. Uh, we still have all of our toggles up here for things like Wi-Fi, GPS, sound. So basically, if you want to set it to vibrate, if you want to mute it entirely, or set it back to normal, you can do that. You can also toggle on Bluetooth. You can toggle on reading mode, which is basically kind of changes the screen brightness and color for uh, better reading. And that only works with certain apps like the Google Play Books app or the Kindle app. We also have mobile data, which we can turn on and off. We can turn on blocking mode, which allows you to block notifications so you don't get notifications, especially at nighttime. You also have power saving mode. So if you enable power saving mode, you can see it dims the screen down, dials back the processor, that sort of thing. And you also have multi-windowing mode, which we'll demonstrate a bit later. Now, if you want to access any one of these directly in the settings menu, basically all you have to do is hold on any one of them. So for example, if I want to hold, if I want to get to my blocking mode here, just tap on it takes you right to that settings panel. So here you can see I can set it so it turns off incoming calls, turns off notifications, turns off the alarm, turns off the LED indicator, and I can uncheck them if I want. You can also set a specific time, which I have enabled here, so 9 p.m. to 6 a.m., basically when I'm sleeping. Uh, and you can also select certain contacts you want to be able to get through all of this in case of an emergency. Now, if you want to get to even more toggles, basically tap up here and you can see all of them. So you can see uh, screen mirroring, Wi-Fi hotspot, NFC, S-Beam, AirView, Air Gesture, Hands-Free, Smart Stay, Smart Pause, Sync, Airplane Mode, and Smart Scroll. So you can see all of the features from the GS4 are here, but they're kind of hidden. Now, if you want to edit what appears in the... Uh, drop down shade, you can go to this menu and basically what you have to do is remove one of them so you can add another one of them. So for example, I removed multi-window mode and I can drag air view up here. So if I go to my drop down menu now, I can see that there instead. So uh, you do have a limit on how many you can put up here, but you can customize it to what you want. Now, in typical Samsung fashion, we do have our Android control. So we have our menu button, which is contextual. We have our home button, which takes us to the home screen. And we have our back button. Now, if we double tap the home button, it takes us to our S-Voice controller. Uh, so let's go ahead and do a basic search here. How tall is the Empire State Building? Well, that didn't work, so let's try something else. What's the weather like tomorrow? There will be a high of 74 degrees with lots of sunshine on Saturday. Launch the YouTube app. Open watch the YouTube. Okay. <laughs> I don't think that's what I wanted. So S Voice still is kind of a mediocre voice assistant, but it is there. Uh, so you can also launch other things by tapping and holding the uh, home button here. So you can get to, instead of S Voice, you can get to Google search. So we can do a little search here. What's the weather like tomorrow in Detroit? Tomorrow's forecast for Detroit is 73 degrees and clear. How tall is the Empire State Building? The Empire State Building is 1,454 feet tall. Now getting back to that, again, just tap and hold the home button. It gets you to your application switcher. So here you can see all your recent apps. So you can quickly jump into any one of them or you can close them. So you can swipe them out of the way to close them or you can close them all. Now we also have our application manager here. So we can see our active applications. Uh, we can see our downloaded applications. We can see how much RAM we're using and we can clear d data on these apps but and clear them back to default. Now if we tap and hold the menu button, we get something new here. So instead of bringing up Google, it now brings up S Finder, which is sort of a search app for the device. So for example, I can either type in Android or I can speak it Android. So it searches my device, so it sees under Chrome I have two bookmarks, uh, recent history, my files, I see an Android app, S Planner, under settings I see Android version, Android Beam, etc. Under web history I see those uh, recent links and I can also search the web. Now the Note 3 also launches a new feature, at least in the US, which is this magazine viewer. So basically all you have to do is swipe up to get to this flipboard powered sort of magazine viewer. Basically everything is aggregated into this kind of magazine viewer 
Obscure, which you can quickly launch and uh, tap on any one of these articles to launch into those articles. So you can see here, 9 to 5 Mac has this story, and I can flip through it. So you can see it kind of repackages the article, sort of strips out the images and strips out the formatting and puts it into this kind of full screen viewer, which is pretty useful. Again, this is powered by Flipboard, so you can manage settings uh, uh, such as your subscriptions, uh, what type of topics interest you. You can also add your Twitter and Facebook accounts and see all of the links that appear in those on those accounts here as well. You also have this little drop down menu which allows you to quickly access your device here. So you can see your apps drawer, your browser, Google search, email, the camera, as well as your phone dialer. So if you just tap on any one of these, it takes you out of the app and takes you right to those apps. Now, if you're on the home screen and press the home button again, it does launch that app as well. And you can modify that if you prefer just by going to settings and uh, unchecking open using the home key. We also have a revised multi-window mode. In order to activate it, just tap and hold the back button here. So you can see your drawer here, which kind of hides. And you get this little tab here to pull out if you want to access it. You can also move this around just by tapping and holding that tab there takes you to the other side if you prefer. Now the multi-window mode uh, for the most part is still the same here but they've added a few features. So for example if you're new to this basically all I have to do is drag one of these apps and then drag another app to another part of the screen and you can run two apps at the same time. So for example you can take a look at my Twitter and I can continue browsing Chrome and if I want to exchange one of these apps I, I can just drag it down here and uh, there you go, I have my email and I have Chrome. So it allows me to work in two apps at the same time. This also works in landscape mode here and you can see you can move uh, the slider here back and forth to resize the window for your preference. Now, there are a few interesting things here with a new multi-window interface. So for example, I can drop a series of apps into these windows and let's do YouTube, let's do play movies, all right, so now if I tap the center bar here, I get these controls up here. Now, one of them is this sort of uh, recent apps button, which gives me all the recent apps I've loaded into the screen. So, for example, I see YouTube, I see Play Movies, and I see Twitter. So I can quickly access any one of them just by doing that. So you actually have multi-windowing within multi-windowing. Uh, it can be a little confusing here because, for example, the multi-windowing mode up here, so if I tap this circle, if I tap above it, now I can control this window. If I go up here, you can see they have different ones because I have not loaded additional windows up there. So you just have to keep in mind where you've decided to load the windows in the background on which side of the screen. Now, you also have additional controls up here, so you can switch between uh, the top and bottom screen, and you can also... Uh, Go up here to copy the text or images of one screen to the other. That works especially well with S Note. Basically, it takes a screen grab of one screen so you can tap it onto the other. You can also copy text specifically. Uh, you also have the ability to exit one of those apps. Now, if you like a specific arrangement of windows, such as Twitter and Chromebook, at the same time, you can actually create a recipe. So basically, you go down here, you go to Create, it will create a Chrome slash Twitter recipe. So let's click OK. So basically, if I go up here now, I can see Chrome slash Twitter. So if I launch that, it takes me to the Chrome and Twitter window setup. So that's kind of a neat way of sort of customizing that experience. Now, of course, the big story here is the S Pen. So when you pull it out, it automatically brings out this air command. So this is kind of a redesign of what we had with the uh, Note 2, which basically brought you to another screen, which is kind of uh, intrusive or disruptive. So every time you brought this out, it would kind of be a nuisance. Also, if you bring down the drop down menu, you no longer see that sort of dedicated panel to the S Pen like you got with previous versions. And when you place it back in there, uh, you can see, and you pull it back out again, it activates it. If you want to leave it, just tap the screen anywhere. Now, if you want to bring it up, just tap the button on the side of the pen. It brings it up. Of course, you do have to be in close proximity to the screen. And as you can see, we do have that air view system here. So you can basically hover the pen over any one of these. You can tap on it. launches that utility. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look to see exactly what's going on with any one of these uh, features here. So let's bring up air command again by tapping on that button. And uh, you can see we have... This is uh, Action Memo, we have Scrapbooker, we have ScreenWrite, S Finder, and we have Pen Window. So let's start with Action Memo. Action Memo is kind of interesting here. So for example, if somebody gives you a phone number, and uh, all you have to do is take out your pen, bring up error command, go to Action Memo, and write down a number. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1. And we're going to say Steve. All right, so basically I have a note, and if I go to this action memo icon, it gives me the option because it can, it's able to read the text. So it's able to read my number, it's able to read this name, and I can either call it, I can add it to my contacts, I can send an email or, or send a message, I can send an email, 
I can do a web search, I can map it, or I can task it. So you can see that depending on what you write in here, you have several options. So you can put an address here to launch uh, the map. You can just do a web search by searching the term. Uh, you can create an email. So you can write your email instead of a number and a name. So let's go ahead and create a contact. So you can see here, well, I got that wrong, stove, but close enough. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one. So it, it did get that right. Now we also have scrapbook mode, which basically allows us to clip articles and videos from either your device or the web and put them in one location. So for example, if I'm researching this Note 3 review, I might go to a lot of articles, circle them, or some videos and circle them and place them in my scrapbook. So just to show you this, I'm just gonna use some random articles here. I'm just gonna, again, activate air, uh, scrapbooking mode. Basically all I have to do is circle it. It will process that article, put it into sort of a a, a reader mode basically strips out the text and the formatting and just puts it in this reader mode and I'm going to say okay so I'll save it to my scrapbook and I can continue searching for other things to add to that scrapbook I can even go to the YouTube app and uh, grab a YouTube video so let's just grab any video here first I have to activate uh, scrapbooking just by pushing that button hit scrapbook circle all right so it's added that video now if I go to the scrapbook app which I have right there you can see those are the items I've added to my scrapbook. And if I go here, if I tap on this article, I can go to the original link. It takes me right to the original source. I also have something called screen write, which basically takes a screen grab of the screen. So you can see it will take a screen grab and I can write on it. So, hello. So this is one way, for example, if you're uh, searching the web and you find an article or you see a photograph or something, you can basically do a screen grab, take a note and save it for later viewing. Now we also have quick access to S Finder, which is basically the onboard search app. And basically this allows us to search uh, either the device by category, so Chrome, My Files, S Planner, Settings, Web History, Search the Web. Uh, you can also select them from this menu up here. So if you wanna limit what search, you can do that, such as personal information, videos, etc. And so you can see it starts uh, weeding it down to just S Planner and the web according to what you've searched. You can also limit by time, such as past 30 days, past seven days, yesterday, today, next seven days. So I guess if you're searching for calendar events. Uh, and uh, you can also search by your tags. Now we also have something called Pen Window. So Pen Window basically allows us to draw a square to bring out some pop-up apps. So let me demonstrate this. Basically just draw a square to the size you want that app to be. So you get several apps that are compatible with this feature such as the calculator, the YouTube app, contacts, hangouts, internet, chat on phone, and the clock app. So for example, if you want a calculator, you can see it's kind of the same size that you drew that circle or square. Uh, and you can move this around and you can see it pops out and you can continue doing other things in the background such as launching the browser. So you can also resize it to the size you want and uh, you can also minimize it. So when you minimize it, it kind of pops up into this little circle here uh, and it stays kind of out of the way. So if you want to quickly access it, just tap on it, brings it back and you can go to full screen mode as well. So again, just bring up the pen window, draw a square Let's launch the YouTube app. So it takes us to YouTube and it's probably logging into my account. So here is my account. I can, can watch a window. So let's see what's going on here. So let's just pick this window. Tomorrow. So I can watch, let's turn this down. So I can watch YouTube in the background or in the foreground while doing other things. I can even minimize it here. So you can see it does pause it, bring it back up and I can continue playing it again just by tapping it. And I can close it if I want to get rid of it entirely. Now, because the Note 3 is a large phone, they do have one-handed operation. All you have to do is go to something like the phone dialer or the calculator and go to menu and go to one-handed operation. And you can switch between left hand or right hand side, depending on your preference. Now, if we take a look at the keyboard, this is pretty much a two-handed keyboard, but it's nice and spacious. So if you want to use two hands, it's a really comfortable keyboard. It's a little far to reach for most people. You kind of really have to move it around in your hand to get a position on each key. But you have several keyboard options here. So for example, you just happen to hold this here, you can switch to to the voice keyboard. Hello, this is Mike from Rochester Hills, Michigan, period. So you can see it does a pretty good job and it does it pretty fast. Now we also have our pen keyboard. So if we activate our pen keyboard, we can actually hand write in. So let's see if it can recognize my terrible handwriting. So you can see Michael even recognizes punctuation, although I didn't get it this time. So let's try this. Hello, this is a test. 
So you can see it did it pretty well there. You got my punctuation. It even gives you this little indent to indicate spaces. So it works pretty well. It's kind of an improved version of what we've seen before. Now we also have our clipboard here. So if we go to the clipboard, so these are all the things we've saved, like screen grabs, for example, like I saved the screen grab of the insane performance of the uh, Note 3 on our benchmarks, which I'll demonstrate a bit later here. So you can see, not too bad. Uh, but anyway, you can add these uh, clips to my email, or and I can resize it and edit it if I want. And I also have several keyboard options here. So for example, you can go to the normal keyboard as we have here. You can go to the floating keyboard, which you can then move around on the screen. So for example, if you want that one-handed keyboard, there is your option. Uh, and if we go here again, we can bring up additional keyboards. Uh, we can also go to the one-handed operation, which will shift it to the left hand or right hand side, depending on your preference. Now there are a lot of features on the Note 3 and the best way to explore these is just to go through the settings menu. So under connections you can see we can toggle on Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, tethering and portable hotspotting, airplane mode, data usage, so we can see our data usage just by tapping on that. Uh, we can also see more networks. So if we go to this we can see and we can set up our mobile networks, our APNs and that sort of thing. Under NFC we can enable NFC which is available through the battery so the battery has the NFC technology so you can use it here uh, we have S-Beam which sends files via NFC and Wi-Fi direct we also have nearby devices so you can enable this so using DLNA other devices can see the content on your device and stream it to those devices now screen mirroring works with Samsung smart TVs so this allows you to mirror the screen of this device wirelessly to your smart TV. So basically you get the audio and the video directly from your device on the TV. So if you're in portrait mode, you see it in portrait mode. If you're in landscape mode, you see it in landscape. So whatever is on your device can be broadcasted on your TV using that feature. Uh, you have your lock screen controls. This is where you can enable multiple widgets on the lock screen, your clock widget options, shortcuts, so you can actually add uh, links to the lock screen. So for example, if we tap on this, you can add certain apps to the screen. So if we enable this, uh, and you go to your lock screen, you can change it, but if you want to edit this right now, so for example, if I want to remove the standard browser and add Chrome, I have to remove one before I can add the other, I can add Chrome, and now if I go to my lock screen, you'll see the apps right on it. So I can quickly launch Chrome just by swiping up on it. it takes me right to Chrome. Now if you look at wallpapers and if we go to the lock screen, you can see we have travel wallpapers because uh, Samsung is partnering with TripAdvisor. You can get these travel themed wallpapers. You can set the duration. So every three hours it will change the background of the lock screen to a different wallpaper. So if you go to our lock screen now, you can see we get this uh, wallpaper from Banff, Canada. Now if we go to our controls, there are a lot of things here. So we have voice control. Basically, we can answer or interact with this phone just by using our voice. So for example, if we get an incoming call we can say answer or reject or etc. Uh, if we get an alarm we can say snooze or uh, stop. Uh, camera mode you can say shoot or cheese or smile. With music you can say pause, next, previous, play, volume up, volume down. You also have hands-free mode. Hands-free mode is useful for driving. So for example if you're driving you want it to automatically tell you the incoming caller's uh, information. You can use air call accept. Basically wave your hand over the screen to accept incoming calls. You also have messages. It will read out your messages. The alarms will read out the alarm information when the alarm sounds. Schedule. So it'll read out scheduled alarms. So for example your calendar events. Uh, you also have your S Pen here. So this is your S Pen controls and you can turn off pen detection. Basically it knows uh, it can detect the presence of the S Pen. So if you walk away from it, if you leave the pen somewhere else and walk away from it, it will sound an alarm and let you know that you've left the pen somewhere. Uh, S Pen Keeper something you can enable or enable. The pointer, so it shows the pointer constantly right now. You can turn it off if you prefer. We also have something called direct pen input. So basically if you've detached the stylus or S Pen and you hover it near a text box to enter information in. So for example we have a contact here. So if we hover it nearby you get this little indicator here. So if we tap on that it gives us this little handwriting window and we can add a name. Now we have lots of motion control options, many of which are familiar to the GS4. So we have air gesture, and under air gesture we have four options here. So quick glance basically allows you to quickly look at the information without waking up the device. So let's go ahead and try it. And we're going to wave our hand over that sensor up top. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. There you go. So wakes up, shows you whether you got some calls, missed calls, emails, your battery percentages, that sort of thing, and shows you all of your notification badges on that screen. Uh, you also have AirJump. Now AirJump only works right now with the email body, so 
the text of an email body and you can basically use your hand to gesture up and down to navigate through the text. You also have Air Browse. So this works with the Gallery app, My Music, Music on the Lock Screen, and S Note, and you can enable specific ones here. So let's go ahead and try it. Basically all I have to do is swipe your hand over it. So right now we're kind of in the gallery viewer. Just swipe left and right. And once you hit the end, you can see it kind of gives you that little blue effect at the end. Come on, there you go. So you get the idea. We also have air call accept. So basically you can answer the phone just by waving your hand in front of it. So you just move your hand left to right and there you go, wakes up the call for you. Now we also have AirView, and AirView has been expanded for the Note 3 thanks to the S Pen. So we're familiar with this on the GS4. Now if you go to AirView mode, you can select the input method for AirView. So we have pen, finger, and auto. So if I use auto, basically it will know whether I'm using my finger or pen to interact with AirView. All right, so we're all set with that. Now if we go back here and we can demonstrate AirView, how it works. So if we go to a gallery, for example, let's go to our gallery here. We can hover our pen over our gallery and you can see it expands it out for us so we can see specific folders in here, but we can also use our finger. So we just hover our finger over it, there you go. Now we also have Air Command. Now we're familiar with Air Command, basically this is that pop-out that appears when you bring out the S Pen, but there are a few other things you can do with Air Command. So you can insert and attach images to a message, you can add recipients to a message, and you can show available actions on an image. So for example, if we try this out, Basically, you hover the pen over the attach icon, press the button on the S Pen, and it gives you the option to add images here. So basically, these are the images available to your gallery. We can also add recipients, so let's go ahead and try this out. So again, if you hover your pen over the contacts button here, tap the button here, you get some of these contacts which you can add. And we can also show available actions, so if we're in the gallery here, again, press the button here. You can uh, photo frame it, crop it, edit it, or share it. Now we also have lots of smart screen features which work with that front firing camera. So you have smart stay, smart stay basically prevents the display from going to sleep if it detects the presence of your eyes. But of course, you do need, do need ample lighting for this feature to work. So in many cases, it's kind of nice to be able to have uh, the option up here to toggle them on and off in case they're not working. You also have smart rotation. So basically it's able to detect whether you're laying on your side or not. So if you're in bed and you're reading the book, you don't want the display to go to landscape orientation. Uh, this feature will kind of automatically detect whether that's the situation or not. You also have smart pause which will pause video playback if you move your head away from the display. You also have smart scroll. Smart scroll either works when you tilt your head or tilt the device. Basically you can kind of scan through a page uh, instead of swiping up and down, you can scan through a page without uh, touching the screen just by tilting your head or tilting the device. And you can also change some of those settings below. Now the Note 3 is also launching with an all new S Note app. So we get a complete redesign, but basically the principles are the same. Uh, we can pick a template. And uh, new here is the fact that you can now sync your content to either your Samsung account or to Evernote. So if you have an Evernote account, you can sync everything you add to your um, S Note content uh, directly to Evernote. So that's kind of a nice feature. Also interesting with the S Pen, if you hover your pen over a folder, you can see it kind of expands out for you so you can see all the folders. Now let's go ahead and take a look at Sketchbook for Galaxy. Basically this is an Autodesk app that's been brought to the Galaxy. Now I'm not going to get into this too much, but for example you can change your pen tips, uh, you can change your pencil tips, you can change the width, the opacity, and the great thing about this when you're drawing on it, it is responsive to pressure. So if you press harder, lighter, you can see it changes the width of your uh, of your pencil here, your pencil width. So it works pretty well, it's pretty natural. Now quickly taking a look at some of the Samsung apps, including S Translator. So basically you can speak in one language and output in another. In fact, you can see all the languages available here from Brazilian, Portuguese to English, UK or US, French, German, Italian, Japanese, Korean, Russian, simplified Chinese and Spanish. So I can speak in one language. What's the weather like today in Berlin? And you can see it translates it in text, but I can have it speak it as well. Wie sieht das Wetter heutigen Tag in Berlin aus? Now, group play is something I've demonstrated on other Samsung devices. Basically, this allows you to share music, pictures, video, and documents, as well as play games with other Samsung devices in close proximity. So basically, you become the host device, and all the other Galaxy devices with this app installed then become sort of uh, satellite devices. So, for example, if you're playing music, those devices become individual speakers. And uh, the music plays simultaneously on those devices. Uh, so it works kind of neat. So it basically turns each device into a separate channel. So if you have like six devices, you get 5.1 audio. Works pretty well.
Now in terms of our camera app, again, we have a 13 megapixel camera with a lot of features. Again, all of these are the same features also available on the GS4. So for example, we can take a photo, we can tap to focus, tap to change the exposure, we can record a video, and while recording video, we can pinch in and out to zoom. We can also pause it, resume it, and we can even take a photo while recording video. So as you can see, it doesn't flash or it doesn't make the shutter sound uh, to uh, get in the way of your video. Now we also have voice control enabled, so we can say something like, geez, shoot. Now this phone also features dual shot mode, so basically it records both the front firing camera and the rear firing camera at the same time, so you can see both the subject and the recorder on the same video. So basically when you record video, this little thumbnail will also record. And as you can see, you can move it around and resize it, and if you bring up this little menu, pop-up menu, you can change how that uh, thumbnail appears here. So you can do oval blur, instant pick. Now perhaps one of the most interesting uh, dual shot mode is this glue mode. So basically I take my thumbnail here, place it over something like a billboard like this iPad, hit this button here, let's try again. There you go, you can see it basically fills the screen and keeps it there. So I can move the camera around and it basically keeps it on that uh, image. So the idea here is that if you're at a ballpark or something like that, uh, you can basically broadcast your image up there, move the camera all around, and you can continue to see yourself. So it's kind of a neat effect. You can see I can even move the camera away, move it back, and it puts it back into that spot. So kind of a neat effect. Now we also have all of these modes here which you can cycle through. So you can see beauty face. So I'll give you a description of what each mode is. So in this case, enhances facial features automatically when taking the portrait. Best photo, so it takes a series of pictures and then selects the best to save. Best face, selects the best picture of each person from five consecutive pictures to get the best merged group picture. Sound and shot, it enriches the picture by adding background sound for a few seconds. Drama, take multiple pictures of a moving subject and merge them into one dramatic picture. Animated photo, create a picture containing selected moving objects by animating parts of the picture. Golf, uh, take pictures of a golf swing. You can then play the pictures forward or backward. You also have rich tone HDR, so it enhances the realism of your pictures by capturing greater intensity and contrast to both color and light. Eraser, uh, save the best picture after erasing moving objects from five consecutive pictures. Panorama, take pictures in either horizontal or vertical directions to create a linear panorama. Now we also have photosphere mode and Samsung calls it surround shot, but basically this is the same feature we're used to on Nexus devices. It basically, it kind of coaches you in the process of taking the photo. So basically you pitch the camera up, takes the photo, and kind of builds a sphere around you. In fact, you can see a little indicator here indicating where you're going. And basically you just line the camera up with those dots and you get the idea. So it works pretty well. Now if you look at our synthetic scores, the Note 3 scores almost 20,000 while the Note 2 scored a measly 6131 on the same test. But the GS4, which is a higher spec device, also is well outpaced by the Note 3 scoring only 12,000, a little under 13,000. So the Note 3 is definitely a screamer in terms of the spec department. Now this display is very sharp and very crisp with vibrant colors, nice bright whites. It's not as bright as something like an IPS display which has really bright whites, it tends to be brighter than an OLED display. Way. but the contrast is very dark uh, the colors are very rich it's not over exaggerated as OLED tends to be uh, so if you look really closely here you can just you can see just how sharp this text is on this high resolution display so you can see even the smallest text here without pinching and zooming you can read just fine uh, really nice display definitely one of the highlights of this device now in terms of performance, this is definitely a quick device. So even with TouchWiz, everything is really quick. Definitely, they've uh, really taken advantage of the processing power and the three gigs of RAM to really bump up the performance of this device. So even if you're using that dual window mode, everything works pretty smoothly without noticeable lag. So in conclusion, I'm definitely impressed by the Note 3. I'm really impressed by the fact that they've increased the screen size while reducing weight, thinness, and width of the device to make it a lot more one-handable and a lot more comfortable to use. It's a large screen device without the compromise on the specs like the Mega series, uh, and it gives you that stylus technology if you want it. But if you're like me and really don't have a lot of use for the stylus and the features that come with it, it's nice just to have a high-spec large screen device with a large interchangeable battery with expandable storage. Uh, this 
this is definitely one of the best devices to get. Uh, certainly better than the GS4 in terms of performance, and you get that large 1080p screen. So this is really the no compromise device right now. I'm definitely impressed by the Galaxy Note 3, and I can highly recommend it. So you get a great camera, great 1080p display with that uh, improved Super AMOLED technology, and you get a lot of TouchWiz features that are powered by much more powerful hardware, so you don't see a lot of that lag you're used to with TouchWiz, at least I'm used to with TouchWiz on other devices. Uh, so definitely a great device, great hardware, and some interesting software features that you can take advantage of if you wish. So that's going to do for me in this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next one. What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Board, with just a demo of the front firing camera. Again, this is a 2 megapixel shooter, so it's a pretty high quality camera. I think it does a really good job recording very sharp video and pretty good audio. So this gives you an idea of overall performance of the camera you might use for something like Skype or might use for vlogging or something like that.